So today we'll be talking a bit about dates and times in R, um, in chapter 16 of R for Data Science. Uh, yeah. So dates and times come in many different formats around the world. Um, some of them have date, month, year format, uh, separated by dots or slashes or spaces, uh, with or without zeros, uh, for example, in like single digit days and months. Uh, others have monthly year. Uh, again, it could be numeric or sort of explicit name, like name of the month or year month date. And this uh, graph or whatever, this map basically shows uh, different parts of the world and what uh, conventions they adopt. Uh, and as you can see, it's all over the place. Uh, so dealing with dates and times can be a bit challenging, um, but LibreDate helps us. So um, mostly in sort of data analysis, there are roughly three sort of sources of dates and times. Uh, the most common is from a string. So for dates, this could be um, a month, you know, day, year, etc., like uh, the ones we saw so far. Uh, and there are quite intuitively named functions, uh, YMD for year, month, date, month, day, year, etc., uh, that take these strings uh, and mm -hmm. output um, a date. And the same thing applies for times. I have a, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah, previous slide. Yeah. So um, the first case, you say we can remove the quotes, right? Yeah. What about the second and third case? Can we remove that? Yeah, can you remove these quotes? Um, but um, can we try it and see it work? It, it seems like, I don't know, I try, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work because, I mean, the quotes here, you know, yeah. this is a string of characters to be treated as one thing. So it wouldn't work like that. So you're basically saying, take the string and convert January to month 01, 31st to the day 31, and this number basically into the year. Um, the bit where it works without quotes is when you have just numeric values with no separators in between. So for example, in this case, Mm -hmm. um, this string here or this number or this number in, as a string would give the same value. So if it kind of looks like a date written without the quotes, then LibreDate will be able to pass that. Um, but obviously like the, these letters don't have any other representation. So you need to use the quotes here for those strings. Does that make sense? Yeah. What about the third case? Can it well, there too, pass the... like, you know, yeah, the letter okay, J, the, the letter A and the N cannot live without the quotes. Like they are either, it's either a variable name. Yeah. A string. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. And the same thing applies for time. Again, um, whatever components there is in the string representing the time, uh, you choose the appropriate LibreDate function for that. So here we have year, month, date, our minute second represented like this. And if the order is different, then you need to choose the appropriate function. Um, you can also provide a, a time zone explicitly, otherwise UTC is picked. Uh, uh, okay, by, then, default, by default UTC is picked? Yeah, exactly. But you can specify any other time zone by this time zone uh, argument. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think also sometimes um, it could pick the the time zone for your computer. Ah, right, yeah. Ah, okay. So maybe you have... This is one of the... Yeah. Go ahead. Um, but you can explicitly basically give a time zone so that it's um, the code runs the same way regardless of what uh, which device it's running. Yeah. Okay. Um, the second source is from individual components. Um, so for example, this sort of flights data frame that we're familiar with has year, month, day, hour, minute columns uh, representing uh, the time. And this can be fed into this sort of make date or make date time functions to create dates or date times. Uh, so here we give the year, month, day, hour, minute, and we can see that it's converted into a date time object from uh, basically numeric components. Yeah. 
and is from an existing date or date time object. So you can convert, you can switch between dates and date times by, for example, taking today as a date time. So basically today would give you the date, uh, but you can say as date time, and now this object is a date time object. And similarly, um, as date converts uh, a date time into a date. So now would give you uh, the date followed by whatever time it is right now. And if you convert, convert that to date, you basically lose the time component of that object. Um, so that's one way of like one way of getting existing date time objects. The other one is what's known as a Unix epoch. So this is the time since um, 1st of January 1970 and it's commonly used when it comes to uh, dates and times. So basically seconds since uh, this sort of fixed time point can also be used. So you can see here we have basically 10 hours represented by 10 seconds times 60 times 60 to get like seconds into minutes, minutes into hours. Um, so we can see that this many seconds after midnight on the 1st of January 1970 is this time. Um, so you are highly unlikely to use this, but it, I've you know, included it because it was also in the book um, as, as one of the other ways of like, um, going from one kind of representing date and time to another. And uh, this, this, this is the reference, isn't it? This is the reference time for yes. the, of, the, of, the, of the softwares, isn't it? It is, yes. Mm -hmm. So if you are dealing with, I don't know, some software that can only deal with uh, this kind of representation of date and time, you have a way of um, doing that basically, like dealing with that kind of data. Mm -hmm. um, just like you can build daytime objects from individual components, you can also um, extract components from daytime objects. So if you look at today's date at this time uh, as our daytime object, we can extract the year of this date time, months um, and day and weekday, uh, etc. Um, so M day represents what day of the month it is whereas W day represents what day of the week it is. Um, and this starts with Sunday. Um, and so basically, if you use default options, you'll get an integer representing all of these things. But we know that you know, days have names and months have names. So there's a way of extracting these sort of as strings as well. Uh, if you use label equals true, you will get, instead of 11 for November, you'll get basically this as a factor uh, of the month's names. Uh, and it is uh, abbreviated by default, but you can set that to false to basically get uh, the full name. And the same thing applies for the weekday. Um, so you can see in the previous slide, weekday was two. And here you can see uh, one corresponds to Sunday, two corresponds to Monday, three to Tuesday, etc. So this is yet another way of extracting component from a date or date time. You can also round to the nearest component and so, this uh, is similar to... How about? Thing. Yes? Uh, so, sorry if you go back to the last slide. I've noticed something. Recently I was working with uh, extraction of just a year yeah. and there was, then I had to plot the data, um, long, long story, but um, I was wondering is it that when you actually use some of these functions the result is already creating levels or they're taking it as factors? Um, I mean, here for month and day, that seems to be the case, but I don't expect for year. Um, mm -hmm. uh, year is, um, we, can, we can check later on it, what the sort of type is, but oh. I'd expect year to be an integer. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in this case, it makes sense because, um, you know, otherwise you will basically get alphabetical order or if you try to like sort things, which okay. doesn't make a lot of sense. That's pretty helpful. Yeah, um, yeah so you can also round um, to the nearest component and the similar sort of like the, the same options that you have when it comes to rounding floats also apply here. So you can round, which is typical rounding rules that we know. You can do ceiling, which basically takes, rounds it down, or you can do floor, which rounds it up regardless of um, what the sort of 
part of the zero is. Um, so an example with today's date, uh, if you do floor of today's date, uh, we get uh, the first of the month. If you do ceiling, we get the next month. So we've rounded up. Uh, if you do round, because we're less than halfway into the month, we also get what we got with the floor. Let's say we were, it was the 22nd today, then we'd get the following month, just like we expected, um, as if it were a, a floating point number. Okay. Um, we can also set individual components. So you can use this um, basically to change an individual component of a date time or date object. So we set um, this value to our date time, this uh, random point. Um, and then we can individually change the components. We can change the year of this object into uh, this year. We can change the month, etc. We can change the hour. And you can see, basically, we add an hour um, to the date time. So this is one way of basically either setting individual components uh, one by one or updating them uh, as in the case here. So this is an hour after that time. Another way is using the update function. And you can use this to either create a date time object like here or um, basically changing the values. And if, if they are too big, for example, we know that the months of February doesn't have 30 days. So if you try to set it to 30, it will basically roll over into March the 2nd. Uh, and similarly with hours, it will roll into uh, the appropriate time. Um, the other, so basically that was like static sort of dates and times. Um, another very useful operation with times is uh, time span. So this is basically, um, this allows us to do some arithmetic with dates and times and to represent uh, sort of durations. Uh, and there are three main classes of time spans. Uh, first is durations, which is basically, it represents an exact number of seconds. Uh, the second is periods, which is more human-like units, and we'll discuss the differences between them later on. And the third is intervals, which basically have a set starting and ending point. Um, so the example in the book was uh, Hadley Wickham's age, uh, which is calculated by basically subtracting from today uh, his date of birth. Um, and this is basically what a time difference of this many days. And you can represent that as a duration, which is basically the exact number of seconds, uh, which is this many seconds. Uh, and you can create uh, different sort of durations using these helpful constructor functions. So they are basically different sort of um, time components preceded by a D, which stands for duration, and they convert uh, from one type of component to another component. So seconds is the same as seconds, minutes, as we expected, is multiplied by 60, um, etc. But there is a caveat, and that is this sort of uses sta uh, like standard lengths for all of the time components. So it doesn't take into account that some years are leap years or uh, you know, some regions have daylight saving time, uh, et cetera. Uh, so it can create uh, some problems when sort of used without care, let's say. Um, and you can also do arithmetic with duration. So you can multiply it with uh, numbers. So you can see a duration of one years multiplied by two equals the duration of two years, roughly. And again, you can add different component, different sort of durations and get you know, what you expect. Um, and you can add it to these uh, sort of helpful functions like today to get tomorrow, etc. cetera. Um, the second class of time spans is periods. And these are time spans um, that aren't defined by a fixed number of seconds, but they are more appropriate uh, with uh, sort of how we use time. And they do take into consideration things like uh, leap years and all the other irregularities when it comes to dates and times. Um, so this was again, like one of the examples uh, in the book showing how to use them. And uh, periods, just like durations, have helpful constructors. And these are basically names of the um, time components. So 15 seconds, minutes, etc. And you can see that 
uh, the notation is uppercase, so that's how you can sort of help them tell the difference. And just like with durations, they are vectorized, so if you give it a vector, you get a vector out. Um, yeah. And just like uh, durations, you can do arithmetic with them, so you can add them together, you can multiply them with numbers, uh, etc. And you get results as you would expect. And again, like the key sort of advantage of using periods is that they obey the rules about time zones and daylight saving time and other irregularities. So for example, if you add one year to a leap year, um, you, um, you kind of get what you expect in that you've sort of lost. If you add the duration, basically, um, because this is a leap year, you've kind of lost one day. Whereas if you add the appropriate period, you get what you expect, which is exactly one year ahead, as defined by you know, what we mean by a year, as opposed to the number of seconds in a year, in this case. And again, similarly with uh, daylight saving time, um, our sort of 1 p.m., if we add one day um, as a duration, we see that our 1 p.m. has now become 2 p.m. because this hasn't sort of taken into account the daylight saving time. Therefore, we are one hour ahead. Whereas if we use days, which is a period as opposed to a duration, that is taken into account and 1 p.m. does look like 1 p.m. just the next day. And the third class is um, an interval. So it's a duration with a fixed starting point. Uh, that way, again, it's much better sort of reflective of uh, units in terms of like how we use them. So one example of creating them uh, is shown here. So you can add uh, a period to a certain time and you see that if we divide it by a sort of duration, we get kind of what we expect. Um, and overall there was this sort of summary of what you can do with different uh, date time classes and what operations can you do with uh, you know adding or subtracting them to dates and times or multiplying or adding numbers to them which I thought was very very useful um, and I'll kind of stop it there that's that's all I mean there was a section on uh, time zones but it was um, it was basically I didn't really have much more to add on top of it it would just be like a copy and paste uh, but if you want so we can over it in the book uh, here on the left. Um, that's all I have. Any questions? Yeah, no questions for me.